Welcome everyone to this PowerPoint video presentation series from the days of Adam to 1798 and 1844. This is part two. We're going to be continuing through the lineage of Adam that went down through Christ and we'll be taking the history of God's movement of his people and his church all the way down to 1798 and 1844. You're not going to want to miss this. Please don't miss any portion of this series. Ask now of the days that are past since the day that God created man upon the earth. Deuteronomy 4:32. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, we thank you so much for this day, and we ask that you be with us now. Please cleanse us from any wickedness in our lives, any unrighteousness that we've not surrendered to you. Please send your Holy Spirit to be with us and keep us safe. Send your Holy Spirit to give us understanding. In Jesus' name, amen. The Bible is its own expositor. Scripture is to be compared with Scripture. The student should understand the nature of the two principles that are contending for supremacy and should learn to trace their working through the records of history and prophecy. Education 190, paragraph 2. So we need to understand history from the beginning of time. Now we're moving on to the sons of Noah. In part one, we ended off with Noah. Now we're going to be talking about his sons. In Genesis chapter 10, verse 1, it says, Now these are the generations of the sons of Noah. Genesis chapter 5, it was dealing with the generations of Adam all the way to Noah. Genesis 10 and 11 is now dealing with the generations of the sons of Noah. And it says, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, and unto them were sons born after the flood. Genesis 10.1 See also Genesis 9.19 where it tells us of these three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, was the whole earth populated. So we can trace our line lineage back to one of those three sons. Now we're going on to Shem. Genesis 11.10 says these are the generations of Shem. Genesis 11, generations of Shem, verse 10. At the age of 100, Shem had Arphaxed, and then Shem lived all the days of his life, 600 years. You can read that in verse 11. Verse 12, Arphaxed was 35 when Salah, or Selah, was born. And all the years of our facts in Wood 438. You can read that in verse 13. Verse 14, Salah was 35 when Eber was born. Salah lived to 438 years. Verse 16, Eber was 34 when Peleg or Peleg was born. And all the years of Eber were 464. You can see that in verse 17. Verse 18, Peleg was 30 when Reu was born. And all the years of Peleg was 239. You can read that in verse 19. This is of Genesis 11. Verse 20, Reu was 32 when Sareg was born. And all the years of Reu were 239. And you can read that in verse 21. Verse 22, Sareg was 30 when Nahor was born. And all the years of Sareg were 230. That's in verse 23. Verse 24, Nahor was 29 when Tira was born. And all the years of Nahor were 148. You can read that in verse 25. 1126, Tira was 70 when Abraham, Nahor, and Haran were born. 205 years he lived full. And you could read that in verse 32. Now some people say, um, were these triplets? Not necessarily two could have been twins and one born maybe nine ten months a different time within the same year I have uh, two friends they were sisters and one was born in 
January 66 and the other one was born December 66 and they were the same year born. It was the lineage of Shem, Noah's son, that Christ was born through. The average age of men having a child after the flood was in their 30s. Look at the age men were dying after the flood. Remember prior to the flood the youngest was 777 years old. After the flood Abram was 175 years old when he died. Abraham. That's 600 years cut off from the youngest to die prior to the flood. This had to do with God allowing flesh food into the diet. And you can read about this in Genesis 9, 3 through 4. He warned man if he ate flesh, every time blood was shed, lifespan would be shortened. It was necessary for them to eat flesh after the flood because there wasn't really any vegetation. But God told them if you continue to eat it, your life would be shortened. Nahor was the grandfather of Abram, who later became Abraham. Noah was 895 years old when Abram was born. Do you think Noah talked to Abram about the flood? Absolutely. Abram was 55 years old when Grandpa Noah died. Noah died at the age of 950. You can read about this in Genesis 9:29. Shem was 395 years old when Abram was born. Shem was 495 years old when Isaac was born. Shem was 555 years old when Esau and Jacob were born. Do you think Grandpa Shem shared stories of the flood with these young men? Do you think Grandpa Shem shared stories about the um, Garden of Eden that was kept by the angel with the flaming sword? Absolutely, because remember, the Garden of Eden was still there up until the flood. Shem was 570 years old when Abram died. So Shem was 395 years older than Abram and died 30 years after Abram or Abraham because he was Abraham when he died. So that is a total of 425 years living longer than Abram. Abram was 175 years old when he died. You can read that in Genesis 25 verse 7 and 8. Terah was the grandfather of Isaac. Terah was 170 years old when Isaac was born. He was the father of Abraham, Abram, when he was born. Terah was 156 years old when Ishmael was born. Haran, Abram's brother, died before their dad, Terah, died. Haran was the father of Lot. These days should be remembered throughout every generation. Esther 9, 28. So we need to be remembering this history and sharing it with our children and our children's children. The end. Any questions? If so, please post in the comment section below this video. And you're not going to want to miss part three, so please continue in this series. Until we meet again, may the good Lord bless and keep each and every one of you. Bye-bye.